Hi, I'm Wolfram from DeepStim.io and I would like to show you how you can add a real-time backend to the React version of ToDo MVC in five minutes or less. Now, if you're not familiar with ToDo MVC, it's a project that implements the same to-do list in all sorts of different MVC frameworks. For this example, we'll use a simplified version of the React to-do MVC. Now, the original one comes with a separate model layer that saves data to Laurel storage, and we won't be needing that. Now, our entire app consists of just three files. One that starts everything up, one for the app itself, and one that represents each individual to-do. And at the moment, as you can see, all state is kept purely in the client in JavaScript and will be lost as soon as we reload the page. So let's change this. Step one is download the DeepStream server. There are distributions for all sorts of operating systems. I'm using Windows, boohoo, I know. So let's get the Windows one. Once it's downloaded, just unzip and run DeepStream EXE. And that's all we need in terms of server interaction. We'll just leave the server running. Uh, data will be kept in memory only. If you want to add persistent storage, just add one of the available database connectors. Next up, we need a client library to connect to the server. For browsers as well as Node.js connectivity, we'll pick the JavaScript client. We'll install the JavaScript client via npm and add it permanently to the packet.json by adding a save flag. Now, whilst that's installing, we also want to be working with React.js and for that, DeepStream comes with a mix-in. Let's also install that via npm. The next part will feel a little bit retro. To do MVC examples are self-contained and don't use any module mechanism. That means that we'll need to add script tags for both the DeepStream client and the DeepStream React mix-in to our index.html. Now that both our client library and the uh, React mixin are included, it's time to connect to the server. For that, we simply call the DeepStream function with the URL of the server. In our case, that's localhost 6020 for the browser facing port. Next up, we need to log in. We don't have any security credentials specified, so we can just pass a null here and callback will always succeed. Uh, once the callback is confirmed, we'll start up our React app. The last bit that's missing now is to actually pass the instance of the DeepStream client to the React mixin. We'll do that via the DeepStream client. The last part that remains is to actually extend our React class with a mixin. Once we've done that, it's finally time to experience some actual first-hand real-time goodness. Let's just put the server here, restart the page, and oh dear. Okay, something's broken. We can see the client logging in, but what's that? Deepstream React Mixin requires prop DS record. This is probably a good moment to explain a little bit what's happening behind the scenes. React believes that apps are best composed from granular, reusable components driven by a state. Now, DeepStream believes that data is best structured in atomic units called records that can be observed and manipulated and that sync their state in real time. Now, naturally, both of these concepts go quite well with each other. What the DeepStream React Mixin actually does is it connects both. Whenever component state changes, it updates the associated record. And whenever a record state changes, it updates the associated component. And it looks like we're almost there, but actually not quite. At the moment, only the apps state is synced with DeepStream. The state of the actual to-do items isn't. For that, we need to do a bit of extra work. First off, we need to create a record explicitly. Each record is a little bit of data and is identified by a unique ID. Now that we got DeepStream, we can use a slightly more powerful feature to create unique IDs that's built into it. That also means that now we can get rid of the uh, random ID that we used so far. We're using the ID to request a record. Once the record is available, we set its initial value. 
That value is exactly the same as the data that we used initially for the state, getting rid of the ID and storing only the ID, but not the actual data, as a reference to the newly created record. The same ID that we've now used to create the record and to reference it, we now need to pass to every individual to-do item. So let's change data here to just ID, change the ID setting there, and get rid of data altogether. Instead, we'll be using the same DS record property we used for the app itself. The same principle needs to be applied for removing the records. So far, we've been looking them up by a property ID, but now we're using IDs directly. Once all that's done, we should be quite a few steps ahead. Whenever I enter a new to-do into my list now, it appears right away. That's not new. What is new though is that every change to to-do item itself is synced and reflected straight away as well. Now that's all that's working, there's only one last thing we need to add, and that is removing records. So far, we're only dereferencing them. To properly delete a record, we'll have to call record dot, well, you guessed it, delete. And that's it. From here on, every single addition, every single change, and every single deletion of a record will be synced across all connected clients and persisted on the server side. Thanks for holding on for me so long. You can find the code for all this in the uh, GitHub repo that's mentioned in the comments below. If you want to learn more about DeepStream, head over to DeepStream.io. And of course, it would be great to hear your thoughts on this tutorial and what you would like to see next.